All right, so. Good, all right. Uh, welcome, and thank you for coming. My name is Ricardo, and uh, in this session, we'll talk about uh, how to compose high performance stream processes, right? Um, one thing I wanted to say is that the, really the main topic here are the concepts, right? So I uh, use ACA streams a little bit, F sharp, but really the language and the frameworks know what is important here. Who's important the concept? Is that's gonna, gonna, uh, we're going to focus. So the, the agenda, we're going to talk about uh, why practice stream, a bit of uh, the reason why we're able to reach and the need of practice stream. We talk about a rat extension that you don't need to know about rat extension. I just use that extension as a vehicle to see what's the problem with back pressure. And now we're going to overcome the limitations. So it just, you know, uh, we talk about a little bit about the actual model. Maybe fit, maybe not. We'll see. And then we're going to jump in a rat stream, uh, uh, back pressure, and uh, some code examples. Uh, all the slide and um, the code sample are going to be published on the website, but in the hand, I'll give you also my GitHub account you can uh, download and, uh, and, and play with. So, but I'll be about you. I want to just have a sense of uh, the honesty. So, how many of you are familiar with um, uh, stream processing in general? All right. Um, about the after model, we talk about a lot of after model today. So. And specific about the ACA and ACA streams. Wow, all right, so what should you do here? So let's talk about RATI programming first. And the reason because RATI programming is really an umbrella that covers different kinds of technology, such as we'll see a uh, message passing model, which is the actual model, and also stream processing. So really, RATI programming really um, support uh, the decomposition of problem into, into multiple discrete steps, uh, where uh, each step can be executed in an asynchronous and no blocking manner, which is the key. And um, we're going to see how, how, how the inclusion of back pressure is crucial to work in uh, uh, to avoid overutilization of resources and, and uh, unbounded uh, and overflow of, of buffers, right? So there is a, a relation between, uh, we see short about active programming and stream processing. And I like uh, the, the quote about Gerard Berry when he said that um, reality programming is a programming paradigm that uh, try to maintain and work in environment, but really in the environment what is set the, the, the performance of your application, right? So this is a mandatory slide, but uh, uh, many familiar with the Rack Manifesto. Oh, okay, go ahead. So Rack Manifesto really is a, is a paper, recently fairly new, by like 2013, and the idea, uh, several vendors such as Twitter, Red Hat, and so forth, put together some what I think like common sense about the property that your system need to have to be reactive, right? Really aggregate this product to build a reactive system. And quickly responsive, you can imagine, is a system that is able to uh, respond in a timely manner regardless of the request that uh, your application is, uh, is having on the stress. Resilience is a system able to uh, self-heal itself. Elastic is very interesting because is a system that is able to expand, but also uh, um, they contract based upon the request, right? A message driven is a uh, reactive system, system really use um, a synchronous message passing to establish uh, the, the boundary between components in, in, uh, to ensure loosely coupling in your system. And uh, in 2016, last year, really these major vendors, such as Twitter and so forth, announced that they really embraced uh, the Active Manifesto as a, as a paper, as like a, a recipe to, to build the RATI programming. So, but why RATI programming? So briefly, this is just like a um, few numbers, but if you can compare the number over the, the decades, like what is interesting is see that uh, over a decade, this number is keep increasing, it's not stopping at all. But what spawn your high here is like, in the late 90, the number of users connected on the internet was even less than the number of users that uh, last year Twitter was handling, right? So this number keep increasing in, in, uh, in a stoppable pace. But furthermore, think about we're facing a new era, right? We are surrounded by a system that produce millions of events. We have cell phone, IoT, and uh, they produce, produce this large amount of data or, or big data that it, we have to process, deal with, right? Uh, 
And uh, we need to write applications that manage and deliver it in a responsive manner. Think about, right, these days we're talking about self-driving cars, right? And uh, this car have a bunch of sensors around and to figure out the real time uh, using machine learning or some sort of processing, uh, almost like a life safe decision, right? So they need to be very, um, very fast and responsive. So stream, let's bring it to, to stream, right? Which is a, a primary reason we're here. And uh, stream, think about like a, um, stream of data is a sequence of elements that could be infinite, right? Concept of the stream is a um, tra transient, which means that exists as long as the producer that produces the data. And ephemeral means that the data is very fast, right? It comes and goes in a short time, which brings the concept of data in motion. And um, data in motion is really the data that is uh, uh, processed in real time, which analysis happens exactly the time the stream is passing through your pipeline, right? We don't have time to get the, the data from the data stream, persist, they come back later using, you know, Hadoop or whatever. It has to be done in real time to be processed. And uh, there are three main characteristics that describe your data in motion, right? We have variety, which it doesn't really rely, um, um, target just the variance of your data, right? We have different kinds of data for sure, but also variety is um, target also the variable speed because your stream can, you know, it can be a constant over time. It can be increased, have spike, or reduce, right? So variety about data type, but also the speed. In velocity, well, think about system that can have a large number of, of events, right? producing 10,000, the thousands, or millions. And uh, this means the system tend to have both high volume, but also uh, high velocity. And high velocity means that the data generated in a very high rate. In this case, when I mention asynchronicity, and uh, we talk about a synchronous programming model later, how help to use efficient, efficiently resources, right? And, and uh, we try to avoid, to minimize the blocking thread, but also to create this boundary that we'll see later how we can avoid to, redu to reduce memory consumption and, and, and uh, optimize the resource consumption. In volume, of course, I mean, we have a lot of data, right? We have a lot of data to deal with that. As I mentioned, potentially infinite. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, just you know, shoot me during the conversation, rather answer in any context, the way the hand. So, rather have a like a two way conversation. So, that extension. So, that extension is a library. Am I familiar with that extension? So, there are different kinds of implementation, not just .NET, but Java, Scala, Ruby, so forth. So, but it's a library for composing a synchronous and event based uh, program using observable. And uh, what really um, is nice about this library that uh, it really provides an abstract way to program like was um, event, like was array or list, right? But I'm gonna talk about the extension for the reason I want to use the problem and then we found the solution. However, these two interfaces, the observer and observable. And keep in mind how these uh, interfaces are, um, are defined, right? Because we're gonna see later how the RATI stream really enrich these interfaces. This is like, see, I think about this as a base interface. You're gonna see a more enriched and, and, and a better interface to deal with the fact rest of it. So this is, these interfaces aim to produce what is a generalized mechanism for push-based uh, notification, right? Um, this model is allowed to treat stream asynchronously. And, um, can you, can you hear me? Okay. And, um, and uh, composed operations, as I said, like uh, you work with array or, or list. What is nice about this uh, library is that invert the pooling model with the pushing, right? So we have, um, like in, in, uh, in C Sharp or in Java, we have these uh, enumerable and enumerated interfaces where you get some data. In this case, we revert the, the, the architecture with pushing data to the system, right? So you can see here, clearly from the slide, uh, from the old model with a pulley, we're asking for data. Instead, the system is not blocking, it's asynchronous, it's waiting for a notification that our data is available. Uh, what is actually pretty clear here, I like to, this is the implementation interfaces, but if you check these two properties from the server, on net and on current, you see really how they do all, right? The current get some value, right? So it can be blocky if the data is not available. On the other side, or next is set something. You don't have to block, it's just set, right?
And uh, really, all the idea is uh, composition. Composition really is the king here. You compose um, operator to create query and compose single set event in a very uh, rich manner. So the idea here, you can compose the data in a pipeline. And this applies also to, um, you can see, stream processing later. Um, all the data you compose is the block, you process your streams uh, in, in the pipeline. But let's check what's the problem. And uh, actually, I'm going to place this in, uh, in, in the code. So this is a solution here. I have um, actually um, some local file system. It's a stock ticker, right? With a UI, you're gonna see like a chart about the stock ticker history. I have a, in a file system some sort of a CSV file here with a loading memory. And the reason because I choose to load on the, uh, the, to use file system here because I'm able to load in memory the data. I really simulate a very high uh, throughput to send the data to a bank um, consumer, right? So I have two, two main functions. The start function here, it created by uh, array of stock file and uh, launch an observable stream, which is a custom observable. We're not familiar, just simply um, load, uh, you load each file in a, can you see the, the code in the back? A little bit bigger? Bigger now? Okay, so you load, the, the, the file and create an observable parsing each row of the, the CSV file and create an observable. And then the end, I create this whole amount of observable and use the uh, aggregate function, which is think about a uh, reduce function in other programming languages. Right? Uh, I reduce all the observable using the merge operator and the merge call in a big observable and start pushing to my uh, consumer. <coughs> then I the observable only just to update the UI in, in, a, in the current context. I just group the, uh, the stock ticker by symbol, I flat map, and then update the chart, okay? Let's run this code and see what's happening. What I want you to look here is this diagnostic tool here. You can see how it spiked. And right now we're already, at, we spiked from 800 megabytes to two gigabytes of memory. And now we are almost to a point out, and we have a lot of allocation, and the leverage collection is kicking in to you know, free up some memory. And you can see here the UI is running around as it freeze. It's running around as it freeze. Even if it's asynchronous, the system cannot handle this kind of throughput, right? Because we have the bottleneck, which is the memory, the GC, right? Right now it's a three, uh, three uh, gigabyte memory utilized. Probably if you go forward, you're gonna get like out of memory. But, so how are we gonna deal with this kind of problem? Well, a solution we can throttle. This is a new function, I just add this line here, which throttle the, the producer, right? It said, hey, slow down, hey, give me uh, an observable every 75 milliseconds, okay? So it's actually the same code. I put some comment here, so if you can load the code, can understand really what's going on. So let's run this code here now. And now we run, keep in mind to keep track of the diagnostic tool to see how the memory consumption is uh, utilized. Okay, it's running. Uh, here's memory consumption. It's better, it's now one, actually not much, it's two gig. But check what's going on actually here. The UI is a little bit better, but there are some stock is missing, right? It's not linear as what before, it's not full. And it's not great, and I, and I bet that, you know, if you try to play with uh, throughput and with buffering, uh, throttle and buffering, probably you obtain a, a better performance. But that's not the point. One big problem that we are facing here is also that, in this case, throttling is destructive. Throttle is also called the bounce operator, and uh, really what it does is avoid messages from flowing at a higher rate, right? By setting the time-based uh, time throttling between messages. It is means that messages cannot flow at a higher rate than what you pay. But it's destructive, which means that if you set, let's say, one second, in this one second, you have 10 uh, messages, 10 events coming in, none are gone, you're lost. That's why in the UI, you have seen some empty block there. So definitely that's not the way you want to go. 
So let's talk about push model and back pressure here. All right, so a challenge in streaming, it was just an example here, is that when you deal with an application that um, with, with the speed is, is variant over time, the producer and consumer are uh, running at a different speed, right? So if your application is able to mediate between streaming producer and consumer, you're in good shape. But most likely, this is not all the case, right? Uh, Sometimes you have the problem that the producer is um, higher velocity than the consumer, and then you have memory issues. So how the producer and consumer can you know, uh, live together happily? Well, in this case, we have a problem, right? We have the, uh, the producer generate five operations per second, and the consumer only one. Okay, so over time, I mean, in the beginning everything looked fine, but over time, well, the buffer of the consumer starts to fill up until you go over, right? And you get to what is called the buffer window. And sadly, you know, one solution that we saw, we can draw messages, and you lose the messages. Or even worse, there are, I saw some code in the past that when something like this happened, they resend the message. So like it's a circle that never handed, it's, that's actually when your system really crashes. So a solution, of course, is increase the memory, right? But at one point, there is always optimization, right? And that's actually when you run out of memory. So that's actually where you're gonna see how stream can solve this problem. So how do we buffer without running out of memory, right? So everybody familiar with the actor, so I'm gonna just briefly go through. And I want to talk about our model because play an important role in, <coughs> in our solution. So think about that our model as a unit computation that is independent, isolated. It do one work and process one message at a time in a single thread definition, right? So um, it remove all the multi-threaded hazards that can happen when there is some shared state because they share nothing for us. In fact, actor can communicate only through message, right? The state of the, the actor cannot be accessed from external resources, and vice versa. And uh, when the actor receives a message, the message is posted in a mailbox, a synchronous you know, block from the outside world. When the message is processed through bad behavior, all the other messages can be a buffer, which is very similar to the problem we are facing, right? Um, but the main idea here is that it's all a synchronous no block, which is probably the main reason why actor actually may be fit in our context. But one other thing that we have to um, think about the actor is that um, there are other features that we like about the actor. We can leverage this kind of a situation, right? As I said, um, because the um, design allowed for losing couple, you know, uh, component because they're synchronous and pass semantic, we can re reach, you know, uh, full tolerance with supervision. Uh, we can easily scale out or scale out. So in this case, maybe if the buffer of your actor start to be full, maybe you can dispatch the around the uh, message to other actors other machines, right? Um, and also very important is the fact that the actor actually is full compliant to the actor manifesto, which means uh, is a concept with the fact that the actor model is a full compliant to the actor manifesto that um, embrace the reactive programming, right? And also, because we handle the stream of data, it is also a natural side effect. The stream processing is also related to the reactive programming, as I mentioned earlier. So, from actor to reactive stream, right? So, as I said, there's no case the actor stream, you'll see later, is uh, based on the actor model, but how? So, it now actually you can build a pipeline of uh, flow processing of a streamer event using actor, right? You can compose the actor, actor send a message, you send a message to the actor, you massage your message, you send the result to the next actor, and so forth, right? So you apply the source of transformation, but there is a problem, right, that one, actor still don't have, um, you cannot handle um, overflow of the mailbox of the actor, right? There is some sort of unbounded mailbox. And furthermore, actor are hard to compose, right? Um, there was a talk before, talk about the, the, the discovery service. Actually, it would be interesting to see how this is work, but in this scenario, out of the box, actor, when you create your actor system, when you create this topology actor, it's very hard to change it dynamically, run on time. 
think about you have actor A, they send messages to actor B. Well, if you want to change and send the messages to actor C, runtime, well, you can out the lock, right? You can do it, then yeah, it's possible, but it's very complex. In addition, actor do not compose, right? Think about the functional programming, you compose function because the output of a function match the input of the next function, right? Well, in this case, actor actually, when they receive a message, that method is void, doesn't return anything, right? So are you gonna compose that? Well, it's very complex. Um, again, it's not impossible, it's possible, but truly, um, composing actor is, is, uh, is kind of hard. This is a presentation of C Sharp about actor modules in ACTA, ACA, and it's very similar to the Java. So this is, a, you can see here, the receive uh, function here, the method actually, because it's void, it take a job message type. Whenever I see the message, this is process the message, right? But how are you gonna compose, right? All right, so what about actually, if you can avoid, you can forget about the actor. Really, we could describe our flow process in a more higher level manner. <coughs> Think about uh, link, any familiar with link? Well, stream in Java too. Okay, so you have a collection of company come from a database, but then you can apply high order functions such as where or filter or select or map, right? Very declarative. This is F sharp, which I like a bit better because it uses the pipe operator, uh, which works very similar to the fixer, to the pipe operator in Elixir. And I need to pipe and compose all the operations in a very declarative manner. So this is actually Scala, the implementation of the ACA stream in Scala. But what's interesting here, you replace some source of number. Uh, this is the sync we're gonna talk about later is that the last block of the pipeline. Uh, we're gonna talk about this component, but the idea really, you create this component, and then there are four uh, flow here, which pretty much your block that process the pipeline. And then you compose them using this funny infix operator, which is the, fix, the tilde uh, right arrow uh, affix. So, We should focus more on composing a set of higher, higher for the primitive, rather than uh, um, the care of creating and connecting the, the actors, right? So in actor model, we are focusing more on the infrastructure, right? And uh, carefully implement the logic and uh, how to handle the messages in a single responsibility manner. But using a stream or, or ACA stream, we are using these high order operations, right? And uh, they look like this comprehensive look like link, that uh, we can implement the very sophisticated blueprint, it's a sort of a graph, to process a stream. So really the framework is going to take care of everything for us, right? We connect the actor and all the infrastructure leveraging all, you know, all the benefit from the actor model, such as the supervision and so forth. So you can see here at the stream, each, you know, each block is a step, it can be merge, merge, or whenever. But you think about like this is what's happening underneath it, right? You have this flow, and these actors are created for us, they connect them, and pass in the message. And well, it's more complex than this, but keep in mind one very important uh, thing. The harder they go from one actor to the other one, is also go backwards. And keep in mind this arrow, because that's actually the key to gonna solve the problem of back pressure for you. Any questions so far? So, this implementation of the um, using C Sharp, which uh, uses a Fluent API, create a, a source from number one to 1,000, it create a, a flow, which is a block to uh, project uh, uh, against each of the events generated to just print to the good source. This is the, the graph, the blueprint that was mentioned, where you actually create all the stream processing here. In the broadcast here, merge actually at, uh, blocks actually create a channel, right? So in this case, from the input coming here, the builder um, create a broadcast with two channels. So you create two channels that can work in parallel independently. In each channel, you can apply different kind of projection, transformation, or whenever you want. And then when you're done, you can merge them together and, and create your graph, which again can be composed and create more sophisticated um, blueprint. Very cool that I want to um, tell you about the fact that uh, there is this concept about um, operator fusion, right? Which in a string processing uh, is as default, the work that diffuse 
the stream operator, which means that uh, the processing step of a flow or a stream graph, as we saw, can be executed within the same actor, which generate two important uh, points here. One is that uh, passing the element from one processing to the, um, to the next one is a lot faster because we work in the same actor. And this is uh, avoid all the uh, overhead due to the uh, asynchronous cross boundaries, right? And also, um, but the other downside is the fact that, so out, out of the box, they really doesn't, they don't work in parallel, right? They kind of, they merge together, they fuse together this processing and work quite sequentially. But this is manual, this is the default. Manually, you can actually apply and, uh, and create some sort of asynchronous function between step processing. All right, so variety stream, this is sort of like the, the, the practice manifesto uh, related to uh, the streams, right? Is also this is an initiative by a group of vendors that provide the standard for um, a synchronous stream processing without blocking and uh, solving the problem back pressure, right? They really aim to define a set of interfaces that you can use to build protocols and methods to describe your uh, stream processing to achieve your goal. So part of this vendor like you have Netflix, Twitter, uh, Lightband, you could uh, call uh, TypeSafe, Red Hat, and so forth. There are three, three main properties, right? One is the synchronous, which is no blocking, and the idea is that uh, asynchronous ensure the optimal, the optimal uh, utilization of resources. But what's really important is that the synchronous programming is really uh, create true unbounded parallelism, regardless the hardware constraint, right? You can have like uh, hundreds of parallel asynchronous process running even a two-core machine, right? Then we have core stream processing, and then finally the no, uh, non-blocking back pressure, right? So how are we gonna overcome this limitation? So we saw out the problem, right? That if you have consumer that uh, higher speed the consumer, you can run out of memory, right? So how are we gonna tame, uh, tame the and controlling back pressure without overflow the buffer. So if I'm at this slide, right, we have this problem with the, the uh, consumer produce five operation versus one operation of the consumer. So these are uh, the frequency or difference between speed create the buffer overflow. So the solution is it's called sort of dynamic push and pull, right? And what it does is that the producer and the consumer agree on the rate of messages by dynamically, which means that the runtime, uh, the consumer producer switch between a push and a pull model. So the producer keeps sending messages, but the uh, consumer, if you remember the slide with the actor that was the arrow back, is able to communicate back and say, slow down, give me only three messages, one message, and actually uh, tell the, the producer how to, to, if they had to increase or reduce the speed. It's very neat actually the fact that the, uh, the publisher can work with different subscriber and each is covered with independent speed, which is very nice. So you can have multiple graph, multiple blueprint, multiple stream processing, all different speed, and the publisher able to handle all independent speed, which is uh, great. And this is the, the interface, right? The contract that defines how we can build uh, uh, stream processing, avoid the problem black pressure. So if you remember from the observer pattern React extension, we have similar um, contract here with uh, on X, on error, on subscribe. But the key here is that now when the uh, publisher and the subscriber uh, connect or establish the connection, well, the consumer send, that, send back an object to implement the iSubscriber interface, which is this guy here, which has this, this method with the, the request that uh, take a, a value, right? Which is the value that represents uh, how many messages that consumer was the producer sent to him, right? Have I been clear so far? So this is quite nice, the fact that uh, uh, they test um, with uh, Apache Flink, you can see how different rate, the producer will go and spike up, the consumer, which is the, um, the green one, was able to cope and agree with the speed, almost, you know, dance it together. You can see how the producer spike up the consumer is able to follow uh, the different kind of rate. 
All right, so, so really what it does, like a stream for us, really raise the level of structure in top of the actual model, right? So it gives a library to process and transfer a sequence of uh, elements uh, using uh, bounded buffer states. So we don't have the problem anymore of worry about the uh, auto memory of uh, uh, overflow buffer. It was designed really with the pipeline in mind, so you can really use to compose in a very uh, modular manner. And concurrent parallelism are built in, but again, is uh, to be uh, implemented or extended manually with a very simple uh, function. So the block here, two minutes, and we want to jump to some code example. We have the sync going to the source, which is the initial part of the pipeline, which is what the event stream is coming in or produced. The sync is the last part of the pipeline, where you're going to do something with the result of your uh, workflow. And then the flow, there are all the blocks in between, and there's some sort of you know, transformation of the, of the event. So the run of a graph is what I show you, you know, you create your event uh, stream uh, blueprint there, your graph, and materialize it just when you actually you run and get your actual system. So think about when you have like a lazy list, actually you evaluate over it. I'm not gonna go through it here quick, but this is just to show you how rich the API of ACA and uh, ACA.net have with a bunch of ways to create sources, uh, how you can run and you know, uh, project against the, the result of your pipeline, and all the API really least comprehensively like, like um, to analyze the, the, the workflow in the pipeline. So demo case, just a slide. We're gonna have something interesting, we're gonna run something simple in the beginning, then uh, we're gonna run um, a tweet uh, that analyzes, uh, run and execute some service outside, some, some sort of I.O. operation, see how this is also uh, cope. And ultimately we're gonna run uh, a tweet that uh, dispatches two channels, and one of the channel run a synchronously uh, emotion analysis to figure out how many people tweet is happy or unhappy. Right. All right, let's demo. All right, so I have, um, this is the code I have sharp. Again, don't worry about the, the, the language, the concept. So this is the first function. I use actually two functions. The use cache, it means that you use a local uh, file system. And that's actually what I use for the example. You can switch and flip, put the use cache false, and actually run and go against the um, live tweets. But I use the file system, I think it's a low like around 70 megabyte of tweet, again, to simulate a very high throughput. Uh, the, so when the tweet is created using the uh, tweet enumerator here, which simply is loading from the local file system here, this file, and uh, the tweet, which is a text, and then convert in a JSON object and push the tweet object out. The uh, consumer, okay? The graph function here is actually defined up here. I define a discriminative unit with different kind of runnable graph already implemented. And here I just pass the type, pattern match, and create by uh, implementation. The kind of did it become red, I don't know why, but this is a common, this is actually the code to implement the, the graph. So let's uh, run, let's start uh, with, uh, I'm not gonna run this one, but just to show you a simple one, the simple console one, it creates just a simple uh, flow that project and get the tweet and format the text in a pretty printed manner, okay? Nothing fancy. The, the sync here, which is the last part of the pipeline, we just print the console, super simple, right? Uh, this is uh, I order function, I created up here, I'm not gonna go into detail, but what I like is that I have abstracted a bit to create a more functional way, so this function not query, so now the query I can partially apply, but most likely now I can apply the, um, the F-sharp five operator, okay? So it's just a nicer way uh, to write the, the code. So let's run first the, uh, the, the, the broadcast here. So the broadcast is something more interesting here. It creates the pipeline with this function. Let's make it a bit bigger. It's too bad for this. Okay. 
So I create few flow, few, few block. Want to do some uh, uh, get the, the the user from the tweet and uh, want to get the coordinate or the, the location. And uh, this create actually the who create the tweet which actually can be different to the user because we get we get the nickname and also the the coordinate here in a be different format. And here how you define your graph, right? As you should remember from the slide, uh, we are creating the broadcast with uh, two channels. So right now, the incoming source is, is uh, create two channel independent. And each channel here is uh, one is uh, grab the first channel and apply the pretty printing for the create by the tweet in the, in the format of the user. And then push to the input of the merge, which is the last part of the channel. The same thing happened for the second channel just for the coordinate. Okay, and then I just put everything together, uh, combining the broadcast and the merge, which already I think here the two different channels. And here the tweet source, I just uh, apply some uh, filtering just to be sure that we have the coordinated. Apply the graph that I created up here, and then materialize it using the right set. Okay. So let's run this code. How am I doing by time? All right, so let's run the graph here. Let's actually go a little sexy. So this is just, just print in the console. Uh, the pretty pretty, right? Okay. And just to see, very high rate. Just print in the console, I'm gonna stop here. You're gonna grab the, the uh, user and uh, create by the Twitter and print those in the coordinates. You see how the two channels work independently, but still merge and pretty much work one by one. Okay, okay let's do something more sexy here. Uh, okay, this is a little bit better. So what I do here I, is called the tweet weather, right? And what it does in this case, it creates a graph. Um, again, we create our block to get the user and the temperature. Why is that? Well, here we have actually an asynchronous function that it go out to an external API. And based upon the coordinated the pass, latitude and longitude, it return best source information about the weather. In this case, they're gonna just extract the temperature. Okay, so for each location, I'm gonna get the current temperature. Just to simulate some sort of I/O operation. Here, I abstract again, as I showed earlier, uh, the function. This actually, when you force a synchronous bandwidth, right? I say I wanted this running parallel, and what they do is say I, I apply the parallelism to the grid, and apply my async buffer uh, function, which is going to be the one defined above to go out to the external service and grab the weather information. And, uh, and then apply actually to the underlying uh, ARCA stream function. Here I create the graph with two channels again. One is going to print in the console the user, and one is going to print in the console the coordinate of the temperature. Okay? Uh, here I use uh, the select the travel by 10 right now, and both are set by 10. And there is the reason why I use 10 just for the purpose. I'm gonna show you in a second. But pretty much then I create this block and merge it together as I showed earlier. So here is where I use the async function. I use four as parallelism, so I've had four parallel um, um, asynchronous process go out to the external service. And here is the async pair service. All right, let's run this code here. work very hard to cut the slide in ten minutes. So I'll be time to Alright. So you can see actually I'll be is be slower, right? Because there are some old operations, right? So um, if we stop here we have the two users for the channel and here actually the temperature of the related coordinate for this thing. Okay? So it's pretty cool. Very simple how you can compose different kind of uh, flow and also uh, asynchronous 
uh, request out the, 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 the boundary. So now let's change the trout off to one. So now we have one channel that runs trout of 10, which means take 10 messages per second only, and the other one take only one message per second. What's going to happen here? Any thought? Well, because there's only one source, the uh, producer and consumer agree to work with the slowest one. So right now we have, we're going to have only uh, one tweet analysis per second, right? But this is great. Think about it now. It's slow, but the producer and consumer agree to the speed, right? And if you check the memory consumption here, it's just 30 megabytes, right? Because there is no mem op the memory is optimized, right, for the consumption. Yeah. If you have another consumer at different speed, you're going to adapt also to that speed, which is really nice. So, um, Now, the last one I want to show is the emotion one, so sentimental. So, this is actually very simple. Uh, I did some code here, just some charting, some UI. I haven't finished it yet. I did want to use the coordinate actually to use the map. Probably, if you download the code in a couple of days, I have a long flight, so probably I'm going to finish up with the playback. So, wait a couple of days. But uh, what it does here, I create this, uh, this is the, the, the key of this example. We have run asynchronously uh, with parameters two and apply this function at emotion asynchronously, which is defined in this class here. Anybody familiar with the Stanford library? Okay, cool. So I did some natural language processing. This is like um, a very cool library that can be utilized in this case, where you can have some model, module and uh, you enable the sentiment module and do some processing here, and then ultimately we have this function here that asynchronously return a range between zero and, two and four, and the term in it between is, um, is happy or unhappy. And here I just update the chart based upon the emotion and, uh, and do also some training. All right, let's run this code here. Now check also here the memory consumption here, right? Because now this is very similar to the um, relative extension example we have in the beginning, right? It's still some sort of UI here. Okay, okay, so it's loaded. Now we parse the processing, we mean parse the tweet and update the UI. Uh, uh, the red are the indifferent. Unfortunately, the majority are unhappy because they're not here with us. But the, this is strange. Is it 400 megabytes? It should be like around 100. Okay. But anyways, it's very low compared to two to three gig or the other example, right? All right. So I have one minute to go. So and really, uh, I if you have any questions, let's see. Really, that's that's all I have. Um, I'm gonna. This is my information with a tweet, my blog, and my and this is the in the presentation you're gonna find the, 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 the correct name. I'm gonna publish by uh, tonight, but I'm gonna also post on the um, website here of the conference. But any question? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? No. Well, because because the black pressure uh, optimized the memory consumption. So the, um, well, it's not, you're right, so it's not traveling, but the, the, the group parallelism was set to two. So I have two um, um, sentiment analysis running parallel, right? This one kind of only two at a time. However, um, whenever they could, there is really this uh, uh, balance between producer and consumer to agree on the speed, right? So that actually was the faster it could, could get because we have some processing there, right? So I didn't need any trouble because, yeah, yeah, yes.
know, so uh, you have a, well, an example with, with two channel is adjust with the uh, slowest channel. However, regardless of that, one channel or two channel, is the consumer that pull a notification with the producer to slow down and tell him, you know, uh, reduce the speed because my buffer is getting too slow. So it's the consumer that do the work to notify the, the producer. So think about underneath that you have this actor that the producer sent the message to the consumer, but at one point the consumer sent back a message to the actor or the producer. Please slow down, give me only three messages or no messages at all. And then when it's free or you can handle more messages, and then they send the messages, say, okay, producer, send me more because I can handle it. That's a good, good question. So what's happened there is, as I said, the messages are traded. Right? So um, yes, the leverage, you know, the actor infrastructure supervision is going to break the system uh, in shape. However, the messages are lost. But in this case, uh, uh, some pattern you can use, you actually you can have like a defensive channel that work independently from the channel. It's just super uh, simple that most likely won't like any exception, right? So sort of like if you uh, went to the airline, you know, talk with the two machine, that's when you have a two partner because you know, one server is going to fire other one. So pretty much you create two channels, one in defense, the other one. And when this fails, the supervision notify and they, they say that the safe channel is handle the messages that push it back and reset. Okay. Let's go to the next question. 